I think it's certainly safe to say this matchup, Tobirama Senju versus Minato Namikaze, is the most highly debated topic in the Naruto franchise. Now, I have always had a particular stance on this topic, being that it's close and there are intriguing arguments on both sides, but however, in the end, there certainly is a clear winner, and I have made a video on this before, and I will not be deleting that as I want you guys to know that I also understand the people on the opposing side that I once repped. However, that's right, I've changed my opinion quite a bit and have been very vocal about this towards many of you, and I will not be spoiling my changes of opinion for those who aren't aware, as I do still want this video to be both exciting and not just any run of the mill Toby Rama vs. Me into a video, but instead a full in-depth analysis going over every old argument new arguments that I myself have made, and uh, you know, debunks and explanations from a guy who has stood on both sides. So yeah, without further ado, just two wins between the second and 4th Hokage. As I did the previous time around, I will be scaling the characters both individually at two separate points, providing debunks and explanations for both characters, and then concluding to where they actually scale to in relation to each other. With this being said, I want to start off with the live Tobirama, since if there is one thing you'll notice about all of his scaling is you state it, and then you just kind of say, and that does what exactly? So, yeah, not to really prolong the intro any further, but I am a little sick, so if I do sound weird, uh, yeah, it's because of that, I just wanted to get the video out a little sooner for you guys, but anyway, essentially, I will have timestamps throughout the entire video, so yeah, if you want to debunk or any, to, you know, any particular feat or just an upskill to any feat, they will all be listed. With that being said, let's jump straight into Toby Rama Senju, beginning with his encounters with Gold and Silver Brothers, Kinkaku and Genkaku, as many people believe he is Daroi level due to this, which even I believe is just very much erroneous. The Gold and Silver Brothers, as described in in the beginning of the war arc during their encounter with Darwi, they were once two golden lights among the clouds, two honorary shinobi of Kumo, at some point during or prior to the first great shinobi world war. However, Tobi Rama, the second Okage and leader of Konoha during this time, was brought to the brink of death by those two very lights. So what truly happened? Well, we know these characters had potentially two encounters, first of the which being the more crucial one, so let's just begin with that and then discuss how the second one fits in with those events. So, we know Toby Rama and the second Raikage had a political confrontational meeting during the first Great Shinobi War. It's typically described as a peace treaty with both lands seemingly in agreement, or at least coming to such as Toby Rama and the Raikage were working together. This is more than likely wasn't really, uh, you know, like a Kage summit or a full-blown meeting, but more of a private meeting between the two nations and their leaders, the second Raikage's guards were probably the Gold and Silver Brothers, just purely due for their reputation as I mentioned earlier. However, sometime during this confrontation, Kinkaku and Ginkaku would go on to stage a coup d'etat which for those who don't know is essentially a violent or unlawful seizure of power from a high court or government, meaning that more than likely they actually caught Toby Rama and the second Raikage off guard, which tends to align with their nature as they are described in the fourth data book to be rather fraudulent and cunning, which is also supported by the Konoha section stating that the Raikage is always the strongest of the village, which means that the second Raikage was above them, yet they killed him. Why? Because they skill above him? Well, no, not necessarily, but because they were able to you know, jump him and catch him off guard and manage to murder him via that means. However, that's not all that happened in this encounter. Another thing I don't ever really hear brought up is the fact that Toby Rama murdered Ginkaku. If you analyze most statements made about this encounter, it implies two ideas. First idea is that neither Ginkaku nor Ginkaku killed Toby Rama, and second, Ginkaku had to have died first. And well, what do I mean? Well, once reanimated, Ginkaku remarks that Toby Rama must have brought them back just before they snared him, which implies that Ginkaku could not have lived longer than Toby Rama via his own admission. Don't worry, that's not all, as I do have much more on this idea, such as Kakuzu, a man alive during Hashirama's era, knew of Kinkaku and Ginkaku and say that Kinkaku only really rampages like how he did when Ginkaku kicks the bucket, which just straight up implies that Ginkaku died before Kinkaku. This is not all, if you revisit their bout with Darwi and Ko, you'll notice that Kinkaku is the one doing a majority of all the heavy lifting, with his brother just sort of being a support role, such as him nearly dying and begging for Kinkaku to come save him. So, yes, this is in character for him to be the first one to go down, and yes, this is also very consistent when considering the other few statements regarding Kinkaku, those being from Shikamaru and Tsunade. The first statement is that Kinkaku is the monster who once messed up the second Okage, and the second is from Tsunade, stating that they were the monsters who brought him to the brink of death. 
If you notice, the latter implies they being plural, which means that in the first encounter, they together brought him close to death, and here's what happened from there considering all we know. Kenkaku and Genkaku were elite, honorable shinobi who once deeply betrayed the Cloud Village, with them staging a betrayal in the form of a coup d'etat during this encounter, implying they were maybe guards. Then, they killed the second Raikage using the aid of their Kage-level ninja tools, then they brought Tobirama close to death, to which then Tobirama murdered Genkaku just before they snared him or trapped him, to which this does fit very consistently with Tobirama's character as Madara states, it is Tobirama's MO to strike an opponent when they they are sure of victory. To which we know Tobirama obviously escaped with this first encounter, considering they had a second encounter, but with that being said, another thing that just shouldn't be dismissed is just Tobirama just purely by nature shouldn't be caught off guard all that easily, as many characters such as Hebisasuke and Sai at the beginning of Shippuden weren't able to be caught off guard by elite surprise attacks, so a typically paranoid shinobi and an excellent sensory shinobi in Tobirama probably shouldn't be caught off guard all that easily as well, and they didn't just stab him from behind or something like that. Now, I don't want to spend forever on Kinkaku and Genkaku as I don't think they're super relevant, so for this first encounter, just conclude that Kinkaku and Genkaku at max power are able to harm and keep up with Tobirama, as we know they had to have engaged in combat at least a little bit, so just keep that in mind for future reference. The second encounter is much more ambiguous and simple. The second encounter is on a recon mission with the Leaf, with Tobirama and his squad consisting of many young, promising shinobi, such as Hiruz and Danzo and Kagami. Tobirama, by this point, if you use the data books, has to be nearing his 60s and is ending his term as Okage. They are out on a mission in which we can see scuffle marks noting fatigue, and then Tobirama notes that they were surrounded by the Kinkaku unit, comprised of 20 high-level ninja. Now, again, very convenient, Kinkaku unit, not Kinkaku and Ginkaku. So, at best you could say I was just right, and Kinkaku manned up a squad in an attempt to avenge his dear brother. However, I don't even think that's all that likely, and you could also just interpret this that Toby Rama was capable of sensing the Nine Tails Chakra and Madara from countries away, yet he never noted Kinkaku's Six Paths and Kurama Chakra. So, for the second encounter, you could just simply chop it up to saying that Toby Rama didn't even fight the Gold and Silver Brothers or Kinkaku at all, but rather just fought 20 high level ninja whose abilities could span from Uruka to Itachi in power. Meaning that Kenningen isn't necessarily an anti feat for Toby Rama, just more awkward than anything else and forces the question I begged at the beginning. And Toby Drama doesn't scale to them, so this does what exactly? With that being said, Tobirama is a shinobi of generations, a man whose power and influence would shape not just Konoha, but the rest of the world for years to come long after his era. This shouldn't be underestimated, and neither should his ability be whilst alive. In order to truly understand the pinnacle of not just alive Tobirama, but Tobirama in general, we need to understand his brief encounter with Madara Uchiha during the war arc. During the war, Madara just got done battling these hill beasts and returns atop the statue to which Zetsu begins to annoy him with claims such as he was slow in his capture. In which Madara notes his annoyance, and out of nowhere, Toby Rama uses Flying Rising Slice to transport himself to behind Madara in an attempt to off guard him, stabbing him through the stomach, similar to how he did to his brother all those years ago. However, displaying his clear superiority over Toby Rama, Madara dodges it, blitzes Toby Rama via punching the kunai out of his hand, to which Toby Rama then, using purely mental reaction, teleports to another kunai to then off guard Madara, to which he was presumably blitzed and handled again, as when we cut back a few pages later, Toby Toby Rama is on the ground, rods in his back like a pincushion. With Toby Rama being now so inferior to Madara, Madara now wants to display his arrogance and begins to state that it's quote, your MO to strike an opponent when he's sure of victory, making all the brats do your work. You're still a delegator, eh, Toby Rama? Toby Rama rebuttals, stating that he could say the same to Madara, in which Madara straight up states, quote, but I'm the one the heavens are smiling upon. Look at you, who used to boast the fastest speed of any shinobi. There's a reason you two brothers can't regain your full power. Whether it's coincidence or inevitable, I've got the edge right now. Now, there is a lot to discuss here, firstly being the point I made earlier regarding Toby Rama's MO, but more importantly than that, Toby Rama used to boast the fastest speed of any shinobi. So off first glance, this just means that Toby Rama is even faster than Madara and Hashirama in their primes? Well, not exactly. Madara has a basis to not be basing his claim off raw speed, but rather flying Thunder God as that technique in and of itself is just ridiculously high speed, in which the last time Madara saw Toby Rama in combat was in his 
his bout with his brother Izuna, Madara's potential rival in their MS days, to which we know Madara was looking away, and then he sees Tobirama just outspeed Izuna and kill him somehow with the FTG, obviously, presuming that Tobirama just outsped him, using Flying Rising Slice landing a devastating blow. This would be an Izuna who wasn't too far off Madara's level at that point, as the fourth data book suggests, he was just behind Madara in ability. So even if you grant that Tobirama has speed beyond Madara, Madara would just be basing this idea off FTG, and that's all well and good, as Madara cannot move faster than Tobirama's FTG, and his FTG is just what's displayed all of his relevant speed showings thus far. So, even if you grant that Tobirama has speed beyond Madara, Madara would just be basing this idea off FTG and that's all well and good, as Madara cannot move faster than Tobirama's FTG. And his FTG is what displayed his relevant speed showing the last time Madara ever saw Tobirama in battle, which is again what he would be basing this idea off of, obviously. Another thing you can attack is if boast is even the correct translation, as many other translations find boast about or boast of instead, so yeah. Regardless of your interpretation on the last points, Tobirama possessing this level of speed, according to Madara, isn't too off base, as Madara would just be stating this off the last time he saw Tobirama in combat, or he would just be making a baseless claim, to which Tobirama then blitz someone of, you know, potentially his caliber. So yeah, this statement isn't really all that great, and again, goes back to the question I had earlier. So yeah, at best you could say that Tobirama is a rival to base Hashirama, which isn't too far off when considering they were more than capable of combo attacking together during their part 1 respective battle with old Hiruzen, the third Okage, whilst in a very weakened Edo Tensei. But considering how suppressed their abilities and styles of fighting were, I wouldn't really be surprised if their physical ability was also limited. We also know that base Hashirama can react and combat Tobirama, as he does this in Edo when Tobirama tosses up a right tiger in order to activate the bombs, in which Hashirama reacts to and wraps his wood completely around Jubito. Pause, pause, pause. So, sort of, you know, it kind of sort of adds a little more consistency to Hashirama in base, being either equals or just slightly above Tobirama. Now, for those who have seen my previous video of me addressing the war arc area of the Okage versus Obito, you should know where I stand on many of Tobirama's annoying speed feats that are just commonly brought up, as well as ones that aren't brought up enough. So, I suppose there isn't really any time like the present to begin with some of those. Beginning with the bomb feed on chapter 639, you can see that traversing a substantial distance, unstable Jubito blitzes straight through Hashirama's wood clone and Tobirama's bodies, with both of their respective bodies moving in the exact same manner and trajectory following that, with Tobirama's paper body having clear 2D pieces floating off of it, one even showing a seal tag right here, and Hashirama's wood clone displaying 3D chunks floating off of it. With that being said, pay attention as there being both paper and a tagged paper seal coming off Tobirama's body is very crucial, as we can then see that paper tags marked with seals have been randomly scattered all over Jubito's body, a bare minimum of four bombs. And pay attention to these seals on these specific bombs, as Tobirama then fires off these bombs, Hashirama reacts to Tobirama rather casually, and then the bombs are capable of blowing Jubito back. So this could obviously be quite the speed feat for Tobirama, so let's just analyze how he managed to actually pull this off. But firstly, let's just note the idea that base Hashirama still reacted to Tobirama fairly casually, meaning that Tobirama's movement hasn't yet really been shown to be above base Hashirama. So, with that being said, we need to establish that the tandem paper bomb seals look like this, and the initial bomb seals look like this. Completely different seals, so pocket that. So, whenever we go back to when Tobirama rushed Madara, you can notice that Tobirama is very much aware and cautious of his low chakra reserves, meaning that Tobirama's best interest would to not be fire off tandem at its max power, as we saw with Conan, that is devastating. So, it very much does make a lot of sense if he would want to test if bombs would work at all. Then, Tobirama got the bombs ready, Obito begins charging, and the initial four bombs are placed in one of two ways. First being that Tobirama had them inside of his body, and Jubito kind of ran into them. Or the second option, which I like a little better just due to how Jubito is using the orbs, which should have negated the bombs when they came into contact, unless they sort of floated off, which is still equally possible. Anyway, the latter option is that Tobirama tossed out four bombs in the same manner as to how the tandem, one were, the tandem bombs were projected. With his right arm, he then activated a seal with his right hand that landed on Obito just due to him kind of running into it more or less, 
which that is being very generous to Toby Rama as another equally possible idea and potentially even more probable idea based on the speed disparity is Toby Rama marked Jibito sometime when tandem was going off, meaning that Toby Rama, no matter which way you look at it, mentally reacted to a Jibito from a very far distance, and this is an unquantifiable Jibito at that just due to its fluctuating power levels, with Hashirama also outspeeding Toby Rama in the next sequence, lending credence to this Jibito being below or around that level. So the feat just isn't really as good good as some people make it out to be, so please stop being troglodytes by blowing this feat out of proportion, like here's and doesn't do it, but just better later. Even if you want to skip forward a couple chapters to Toby Rama's most infamous feat, you can quite literally see it's mainly mental reaction from Body Flicker and then Flying Thunder God, which a dazed Casey and Minato and EMS Sasuke are forced to actively engage physically when Toby Rama isn't. Now, I hate to just continuously debunk and poop on Toby Rama's feats as it does seem like I've been doing that the whole time. Unfortunately, that's just kind of the nature of the beast. But to fully understand this feat for Toby Rama, you need to understand Minato and his mental state first. First, as obviously, if Toby Rama was able to blitz Casey and Minato, then the video would be over. Case closed. However, that's not the case. Allow me to explain. Minato Namikaze is a golden child, a prodigy seen like no other. As both Jiraiya and the Dead of Book State, a shinobi of unrivaled capacity, a knack for advanced ceiling ninjutsu, as well as an aptitude for superior intelligence, Minato scored the highest record ever in the written exams, even beating out the likes of Sasuke, Shisui, Itachi, and you know even Shikamaru to come after him. His dream, to always be the Hokage and to protect the girl of his dreams, a foreign girl from the land of Eddie, is set to be the Nine-Tailed Shinshuriki, Kushino Uzumaki, a ceiling master who Minato would fall in love with and look after for the rest of his days, with her teaching him many, many, many advanced sealing ninjutsu, such as the Eight Sign Seal, the Five Prong Seal, the Reaper Death Seal, the Tetragram Seal, and even possibly gave him so much advanced knowledge in that realm of endeavor that he himself was able to alter the Flying Thunder God seals that are on his kunai and his typical just you know, basic marker ones, allowing him to just further the jutsu to perfection as the data books actually suggest. Not to just get off on some tangent about some absurd ceiling ability, but I feel that many people really don't give him his credit in this regard, when in fact, it's much more than just a viable win con in a battle such as this one, with even his basic ceiling such as the Tetragram Seal being what holds the KCM1 cloak to stability. As you can see, the Tetragram, or the tetragram is the actual markings on the KCM1 cloak, as shown here, hinting at Kushino granting her lover KCM1 level ceiling ninjutsu as a mere teenager. With this also lining up with many implications that he does have alternative ceiling ninjutsu capable of putting away even the full Kurama. After learning the ceiling ninjutsu as well as even the flying thunder god, the advanced transportation technique of the second Okage, he then went on to create and master a technique capable of combating both Bijou and Jinchuriki alike, the Rasengan, which just as a child, Miyato clashed with Kurama to save his lover, once again being the hero. Not just that though, our beloved Yellow Flash would go on to earn his nickname in the third great ninja war for his speed with the Flying Thunder God, saving many weaker platoons of Kona Ashinobi, and even besting A and B of the Cloud, as well as scaring Anoki so much to where a run on sight order was initiated. Miyato towards the end of the war was inevitably granted his own team, however it would be this that would be the one fatal mistake. Obito, a student who was much like a son to Miyato with him, even lacking his own parental figures, in the act of saving his best friend, Obito would give up his life, causing a terrible chain of events, eventually leading up to Kakashi killing Rin. However, even with this tragic loss, the village was okay, he saved it, Konoha won, he won, Minato won, dare I say tying his own morals with the prosperity of the village and its people, being granted the honorary title of 4th Hokage, being promoted from Hiruzen's right hand man who even acknowledged Minato's status as the greatest in godlike speed as the 4th data book suggest, Minato still looked after Kakashi and married the girl he's looked after all those years, Kushina even having a son on the way, and the village at an all-time high, Minato won. He was, as he thought, the child of prophecy his master once spoke of. However, on October 10th, all this was to be put on edge with his dear child being born. However, with that, a masked man we now know to be Obito and the most dangerous man since Madara Uchiha would go to capitalize on this weakness and Minato would face him, besting him, showing his blatant superiority, and we will come back to this fight as there is a lot of downplay for Minato there, but still, Minato would best the masked man and Kurama at the same time, with him managing to rescue the village and pull it all out of the despairing road that it was actually headed for. However, it would come with a cost. 
that cost being Minato's life. Minato decided that yes, he could seal Kurama without dying, however he needed the village to prosper, with the Nine Tails still being in their possession, with Naruto still being a baby, and he would not be capable of holding the full Nine Tails, so Minato decided to make the ultimate sacrifice to split it up in death, with him dying and saving the village, leaving all he trusts to his dear son. However, when reanimated, Minato displaying his sheer speed to go on to cut the masked man, with him fatally realizing that the masked man, the man who murdered his wife, destroyed his son's life, killed Hiruzen's wife, and brought nothing but chaos to the entire world, and a war along with it, was Obito Uchiha, the kind child who he once viewed as his own son. This mistake would send Minato into, the, as the data book puts it, a stupor, which is very blatant. Now, there is much more debate on Minato's days, however, in the end, it's still quite relevant, and I do indeed go very deep in this idea in my Hokage vs. Obito video, so if you really do question its validity, please, I encourage you to check that video out, uh, but here, we just need to understand what a daze truly is. A daze, and more specifically a stupor, is a rather common medical term, referring to those whose mental state is so impaired that they in fact lose their physical ability as well. In the direct medical field, a stupor is a state of complete or nigh unresponsiveness in a person's mental synapses and even rational thinking that only seriously vigorous physical stimulation can snap one out of. When left alone, the individual will return to their unresponsive state. Now, I do firstly want to say that I myself am very much guilty of arguing that well, Minato is in a war, and he should obviously be very vigorously stimulated. But I am admitting that I was certainly wrong in that assessment. Minato is an S-Class Shinobi, a Hokage, and has literal speeds hundreds and thousands of times any human ever. So, his definition and interpretation to what is physically vigorous is going to be far different to our own, which one thing that cannot go unnoticed is in this situation in particular, Minato is left alone in this interaction with both the pressure and the orb being placed on his shoulders alone. Therefore, even if you want to bring this back to medical terms, he was unresponsive once again, which is very consistent as we saw him physically react to Tobirama, yet when Tobirama teleports back, he is still very much out of it and is still gazing off in the opposite direction, not noting anything at all. Which means that with the pressure being all on him and him being virtually alone, he would be mentally nerfed and nerfed far worse than at any other time in this entire battle and is also physically nerfed as well when considering he just lost an arm. Now, yes, Minato is ambidextrous, however, losing an arm typically causes very noticeable loss in coordination and balance and obviously would cause quite the amount of shock to Minato, just leading to, again, Minato being at the worst point of his days. Which just goes to say a lot considering there are just so many panels and pages dedicated to specifically showing Mianto's impairment, it could almost be its own chapter. So, let's not be completely dishonest and say that Edo Tobirama blitzed KCM2 Minato, to which if he did, Minato would just be able to do this better as his body flicker is folds better and faster than Tobirama's, which just goes to show the difference in raw speed compared to speed techniques like body flicker and flying rising, which means Minato is faster at both. With that out of the way, and addressing people who seriously want to think that Tobirama is above KCM Minato, which is ridiculous, we can now move on to Tobirama also outspeeding MKCM Naruto and EMS Sasuke. Now, that's also somewhat disingenuous as we do know that Body Flicker is again more of a leap at high speed utilizing Chakra to amp the feet, and it's more of a speed technique as I mentioned, to which yes, Tobirama did technically move there because of this, but EMS Sasuke was still outspeeding Tobirama with the actual physical movement in combat with his Susano, and Tobirama just mentally reacted with Flying Thunder God to leave, which means that Tobirama can mentally react to this EMS Sasuke, but that's about it. Even if you want to argue that the Susano is far above Sasuke, then that's fine, and this feat is just moot for both parties. However, the bottom line is that Minato is indeed faster than this while Okage, as we can see in Chapter 631, in which Minato blitzes all the Okage to the battlefield, including both Hashirama and Tobirama, who are relative, if you give Tobirama his higher interpretations, of course, and Minato is just far faster than both. He also outsped Hiruzen, which is consistent, as Minato has always been above this 
old hearers, and whether that be the fourth data book implying that hearers and praised him as the greatest in godlike speed, or the chapter 238 synopsis statement stating that Lord Fourth has unrivaled strength, which would put him above both all the five Kage and hearers and in speed, who was able to physically react to an unstable Jibito from a large distance even more proficiently than Toby Rama, and outsped Toby Rama to save Naruto. Now, that is potentially a fatigued Tobirama, but still worthy to know when considering how he was able to do that so well, with some fans hyping Tobirama's bomb feet to no end when Hirzen just does it better, yet whilst alive, he was wishing for Minato to still be there to fight Orochimaru for him. However, the common debunk to Minato blitzing all the Okage is that it's only travel speed. Now, this is very disingenuous for many reasons, such as Tobirama stating that he's quick at striking too, implying conjunction of a similar level. Now, regardless, I do still have much more evidence to prove that Minato can react to speeds a blitz level above his own body flicker, with many new arguments I've found in myself. So, for those who have really been paying attention to this video, you'll notice that I never said Flying Thunder God was teleportation, as many fans believe, which is erroneous, and I have hinted at that idea for a while. Flying Thunder God is a high speed technique that, as the second data book suggests, is a high speed movement beyond space and time. Here is the raw kanji for this page and what it actually says, so just allow me to read it out to you and all the important pieces. It's flight across space and time, completed in a flash-like instant. It's swiftness that even surpasses body flicker. The fourth Hokage is Jutsu, the reason for his alias, the yellow flash. It's his high-speed movement over long distances. It really is space-time movement. It's not even comparable to body flicker. It's more like summoning. This all implies one thing, the FTG is a jutsu that creates a hole in the space-time barrier opening up an entry point for the user to enter in from in which they use high speed movement in that void, a space-time void per se, to then travel across space and time itself. This means that it is a speed technique. This idea does not get contradicted with other sources, as a matter of fact it actually gets further supported. Toby Rama, the creator of the jutsu stated in chapter 641 on page 11 that quote a clones flying rising is too slow which means that just due to the less chakra in the body it possesses neither the speed nor chakra necessary to travel across that distance in the flight that it needs to sort of implying it's not good enough for that threshold. Now, before concluding what this means, to further illustrate that there is a blank space beyond space, I guess, is that the Flying Thunder God Guiding Thunder is a jutsu varied off that of Flying Thunder God, but rather instead you open a, a seal up that kind of cracks space and time, and then you project an object through the void rather than yourself. Here is the data book page supporting this, and if you notice the wording at the bottom, it actually says transferred rather than relocated, therefore implying more movement, or travel, which I'll come back to why this transfer wording is just so consistent in a few minutes. Now, for the second piece to demonstrably show that there is indeed a subspace that is traveled within, in the back of the third data book, there is a dictionary section that describes the teleportation jutsu as a technique that allows you to move in a subspace and appear elsewhere. Now, I have officially established two ideas. First of the which being that there is a space open in an area beyond time and space where movement is required. Second being that this is a speed technique. This means that statements such as the four data book stating that Minato handles the jutsu to perfection this obviously mean that if Minato handles a speed based jutsu to perfection, he should just inherently be faster than Toby Rama as well. If you'd like an analogy for this, let's imagine you're running a race, right? And you have a competitor who is the same speed as you, being generous to Toby Rama, as in like the motor units within your legs output the same amount of force and therefore acceleration. You then go home, you kind of perfect your running form, uh, you know, without training the muscles themselves in terms of like enlarging it in terms of hypertrophy, you would then be far faster or at least just faster in general than your previous rival competitor, simply due to you mastering the form of a speed-based technique. It's the same thing here. Concluding that, Minato is inherently faster than Tobirama in these subspaces. This is potentially not even Minato's top speed, as we are aware that he is capable of blitzing his own FTG. The feat is at the end of chapter 630 and the beginning of 631, in which Minato teleports to a kunai that is being placed on the mainland, with motion lines showing the kunai arriving at that time. Minato then cuts into frame, asking if he was late. However, the Bijou Bomb is still on the mainland until sometime after Minato lands 
lands there. Then it continues to wreak havoc until it teleports to another marked kunai already placed on the rock off the mainland to a kunai that was placed prior to Minato arriving there. Therefore, meaning that Minato teleported the bomb first, then went to the mainland, then the bomb actually moved locations. So, Minato did unironically blitz his own flying rising timer, which this just also confirms the idea of a time frame innately being there in the first place. So, yeah, you could say Minato held back in the first subspace and blitzed his own movement in the second subspace, which is still extremely noteworthy as Tobirama's clone wasn't even fast enough to move through that subspace, which his clone is what does all the crazy feats, by the way, but whatever. Hence why he needed Minato's help in their combo. Minato also performed another set of actions during that whole time, placing three marked kunai in ready locations via either body flicker or flying thunder god which just means that tobirama had to do this one time just get body flicker and go to the battlefield and minato does like what five different actions related to a similar thing so yeah <laughs> Following this, anytime Mieto uses FTG throughout the entire war, you could certainly say that since we know the larger the object, the harder it is to transport through the subspace, therefore Mieto having the nine tails and henceforth a far greater mass, he would then be slower than alive at his peak or whatnot, or you could just chop it up to say he's slower anyway because of Edo if you don't like the first interpretation. However, I promise this isn't just random ideas being spouted, and yes, of course, I've provided both blatant statements and scans supporting my claims. However, real physics also support this idea with wormhole theory. For those who are unaware, a wormhole, also known as the Einstein-Rosen Bridge, is a hypothetical topological feature in space-time that would fundamentally be a shortcut through space-time. A wormhole is much like a tunnel with two ends, each at separate points in space-time. This theory works far more in part to the subspace argument that was employed into my FTG argument just a few minutes ago, the subspace is the shortcut. For example, for those who have never seen a diagram representing that of a wormhole, it would be something like this, right? Initially, in circumstances without Flying Thunder God or any sort of summoning, Minato, or Tobirama I guess, would have to travel this distance, going all the way around the space fold. However, if Minato or Tobirama were to have a mark at that space, as the data book puts it, a crack in space and time would appear, allowing henceforth a subspace to open between the two FTG marks marks that link each other. Therefore, Miyato or Tobirama would then have to travel this much smaller distance that would look something like this. Now, note that the two points are obviously not one and the same due to that obviously being physically impossible, but this does still line up with the idea that Minato opens up a subspace in between two areas of space. So it's kind of like that space is where Minato reacts through and now speeds Tobirama or whatever. But yeah, many physicists have concluded that moving beyond the speed of light would be impossible due to that being the pinnacle of speed which a massless object can move at. Therefore, something with such a significant disadvantage in the speed equation compared to that being with mass wouldn't be able to move at such speed logically. However, it could be theoretically possible to relocate yourself at the speed of light, however. What I mean is this also kind of goes along with Einstein's theory of relativity which works in his beliefs of the idea that wormholes can be, you know, stretched, warped, depressed, ripped, etc. But, you know, whatever. One thing you could certainly do is manipulate the space around you. To manipulate the space around you, for it to move beyond the speed of light, to then mean that you're not technically moving at the speed of light, but everything around you is, therefore you can relocate at the speed of light. So, let's wrap this back around to FTG, as I feel this was semi-tangential. The FTG, according to the second data book, is a speed technique that warps between space, creating a subspace. We established that this works perfectly with the concepts of wormholes, and that space can be bent in such a way to where speed would be able to do it. However, there is other properties that would make this more consistent. Firstly being that how the seal cracks open the space itself to then open the subspace area, which I simply believe is done through chakra. Now, for some more supplementary material for that, which isn't super relevant, just could add some stuff I found, and it's kind of interesting as well, just to add consistency, is that Mike Guy during the war arc begins to warp space after moving so fast towards Madara, or so some people thought. But that led many people, myself included, to question that considering many people are faster than Guy, yet do not warp space, is this really speed? Well, Probably not. We know this due to Kishimoto later introducing and conveying the idea of far stronger and faster people than Guy later in the war, such as Kaguya, who is stated to be nearly inconceivable in comparison to a fighter like Madara, who was able to keep up with Guy. We also know that the idea of the data book supporting this, but again, this idea isn't super relevant, but the main idea is it's not speed, 
and we have characters who can move at space bending speeds with them being far heavier than guy so the main conclusion would have to be it's chakra not mass or speed meaning that chakra warps space and yeah i'm sure you know where i'm going with this but miyato implies that the larger an object the more chakra it takes to teleport so yeah which this is also kind of awkward when considering it's moving in a space where mass is virtually irrelevant and there are theories on the only way to move through a wormhole would be to be de-atomized per se, turned into pure energy, pushed through and reassembled on the other side. And this kind of works with chakra being that idea of it being that energy that's being integrated. And this is also called quantum replica theory, which is kind of interesting. It could hint to why Miyato flashes when he comes out of it, but whatever. I'm an anime power scaler, not a fucking physicist. So that just means that the wormhole is probably being increased and decreased based on chakra being implemented or the chakra is like lining the walls of the hole of sort kind of keeping it up meaning that the larger an object would be the larger lining of chakra but either way you go is fine as all we really need is just the idea that chakra can warp space and time in such a way so that just further solidifies the idea of a wormhole even this isn't too outlandish as miyato has been displayed reacting to speeds on that level being eight gates guy but many people have tried to dismiss this feat entirely via saying that guy is in the air and he's slower than guy on the ground but this is just very stupid and funny as if you actually read the fight you would know that guy only ever fought on the ground during the night guy not the sekizo barrage with that being said the sekizo works from guy repeatedly kicking on air increasing his speed every single time therefore when miyato does react to them and teleport to him this is the fastest barrage attack yet now yes while guy didn't kick again he still shouldn't have of at this point as you'll notice he kicks off once he's already passed through Madara's area and already hit him meaning that guy more than likely doesn't need to jump again or propel himself which is consistent considering he didn't jump again or else he would have if he needed to if obviously his momentum was going limp or something so obviously Minto is not as fast as eight gates guy but this guy is still more than relative to an early eight gates guy so if Toby Rama mentally reacting to one Renegon Madara EMS Sasuke is getting hyped up to, to no end, then this feat should be talked about a little more often and actually revisited with a, a brain. Also, Tobirama discovering seals that deal with movement beyond time and space is ridiculously impressive, but not inconceivable as he did find a way to interact with the Pure Lands, a separate dimension entirely, and could interact with souls in some mysterious way, but regardless, this wormhole section is more supplementary material just to kind of be added to my initial argument. Just to, and it just kind of explains why this is so consistent with wormhole theory, but once again, I've done a lot of research on this idea, but again, I'm not a physicist. I'm I'm a power skiller. But yeah, the notes that need to be summed up and taken is just A, the FTG has speed, and B, Minato is faster in a subspace that's created. The last idea that I certainly feel I need to address is when people look back and think about FTG, they think about how it was always teleportation. However, when someone who understands the jutsu, i.e. Minato, he states it as transportation rather than teleportation, which goes again with the wording I mentioned I'd come back to. As Obito puts it, Minato's art of teleportation, which this translation is for FTG and it's just, you know, misconstrued or whatever, but allows him to transport between locations with marked symbols transport between locations so yeah with that being yeah, with that being said I, I i think it's pretty clear that minato is certainly much faster than toby rama from this now one critique you may say is well there could be other aspects to ftg and with all this being said so why is minato faster through the subspace and i think this is pretty disingenuous however i suppose i can understand your reasoning as this is an actual new argument so minato as the fourth data book puts it overwhelmed the masked man with his mastery of flying thunder god and minato handles the jutsu to perfection to which there is an end any similar statement regarding this idea for Toby Rama. However, even one thing you could say is that, well, he overwhelmed Obito and he overwhelmed him with Flying Thunder God two step, which is something that Toby Rama doesn't have, or does he? Essentially, Flying Thunder God two step is exactly what it sounds, adding a second step to exit this subspace with an attack. Toby Rama virtually has this ability with his Flying Rising Slice, which literally is the same thing but with a blade instead of whatever Minato wants to do. So, they both sort of have this in a way, and it's more than likely not talking about forms like that, and 
We also know this as Miyato was able to outspeed his own FTG timers and Tobirama couldn't even reach the threshold with a clone. Tobirama is also very uncomfortable at the idea of transporting the Alliance himself and believed that Minato could do it. All these ideas are all speed related, which is consistent as this is a speed technique, a speed technique that requires travel through point A to point B in a subspace. Therefore, Minato is just faster than Tobirama. Sorry, I, I did feel that that was somewhat tangential in the beginning, but still, there are a lot of skeptics out there who would genuinely question the idea of that, so yeah. In conclusion, Mianto is just blatantly faster than Lord Second. However, is this really the end of the video? Well, not really. Tobirama has a few key points in his arsenal and character that would give him an advantage, such as him being able to teleport to Minato's kunai, presuming he's fast enough to do so, which is debatable, and Minato would be more than capable of reacting to this, whether that be with his Rasengan or advanced KCM1 level full Kurama ceiling. Minato's Rasengan is also able to put down Tobirama, as let's be honest, neither of these fighters are known for their big muscle strength or impenetrable durability, so so this does kind of go both ways, but for Mianto's benefit, we know that his Rasengan is able to clash with a suppressed Kurama during the mental scape, and when B enters Naruto's mental scape, he notes he's much weaker, so Minato here being in Kushina's mental scape would also be much weaker, and many people love to point out the negative and positive charges being added and the chains being in play. However, one thing you need to consider is the size of the bomb, and that in comparison to the one that nearly ended Orochimaru's life, the strongest Sanin's life. So, Miyato's base Sengan should be more than capable of killing Tobirama. Combinations like this are some of the most effective ones in the entire series, such as displayed against Obito, and regardless of your interpretation on that whole fight, that fight, for whatever reason, is Miyato's Kinkaku and Kinkaku, if you get what I mean, but maybe not quite as bad. Miyato, that whole fight, was consistently outreacting Obito, such as when Obito tried to calm him away, and he transported him away. The Mina then Miyato arrived to the shed battle area, and Miyato basically tried to engage again to further his understanding on Obito's ability. That is, as he puts it, a space time ninjutsu that surpasses both his and Tobirama's. So Miyato then holding back to be more cautious notices he needs to hold back and move equally with Obito so he could hence then have him materialize so Minato could blitz him and take advantage of whatever flaw the Kamui actually had. To which he did, and we know that Miyato was more than likely holding back. As for him to rotate his body in the manner he did, he wouldn't have been able to move at the top speed in that subspace, so Minato should be more than capable of also ending Tobirama in the same fashion as he did Obito. One of the last and final things used to downplay Minato, and I would argue more than the Obito fight, is his encounters with A and B of Kumo. And the argument is that Joni Minato is just as fast as Okage Minato is barely Raikage level. Now, initially I had a whole section of five scans providing why Minato got stronger and it's blatantly stated after becoming Okage. However, here I'm just going to leave my favorite argument. And the fourth data book for the Raikage A's V2 cloak, it states that it boasts a godlike speed not inferior to the yellow flash, which means that the yellow flash, or Joni Minato, is either equal or below V2 Raikage's level. However, for Hokage Minato's Ford data book entry, it claims that he was praised among all ninja as the greatest in godlike speed, which means that they both have godlike speed, but Hokage Minato is the greatest who would just be above V2A, who is equal to Joni Mianto. This is consistent with the chapter synopsis statement for chapter 548, or 538, I believe, which states that Lord Fourth is even faster than Raikage. So, yeah, Mianto is faster than his Joni self, so stop being a dumb troglodyte. Hokage Mianto is not KCM1 level, when we have an entire narrative and an implication from Kakashi that is much closer to KCM2 instead. So, yeah, stop downplaying Mianto with these dishonest arguments and just taking him blitzing the Okage to be an it's just travel speed, like, stop. Running, you know, and punching and speed are, are always relative on a general basis, and Minato reacts and moves his arms whilst in body flickers, such as him grabbing Naruto out of his hand, so him, he's clearly, clearly much, much higher than these KCM1 level speeds, or if not, then all the Okage are below KCM1 then, I guess, right? As for Tobirama's main win con in this bout, I think his best bet would either be the Soul Transfer Jutsu implied against Sasuke and Tandem Paper Bombs if he manages to get those off, which I'll come back to in a minute. However, let's be honest, with the speed presented, I highly doubt that possibility, as Miyato's margin of error is just so much larger than Tobirama's, even though I do believe Tobirama is smarter than Miyato, I mean, look what he created. It still doesn't aid his margin of error as much as you might think, as Miyato in character is a very bloodthirsty or at least willing to end the 
the battle as quick as possible. Character when Kasium won Naruto, a character compared to Jonin Miyato first emerges from a mental scape. He blitzes Kisame, in which B notes first to bat quite a smash. That was just like the yellow flash. This directly means that an inferior Minato was consistently trying to blitz opponents off start with body flicker, to which, as we could see in Kakashi Gaiden, he usually blitzes opponents off start with his body flicker and then places a marked FTG seal to then gain an even larger advantage and basically just secure a victory. Giving the second Okage the benefit of the doubt on the possibility, we could see Tobirama use his very masterful sensory skills, coupled with his excellent mind, to potentially predict where Minato would emerge with Flying Thunder God, or at least maybe, you know, sense if he uh, is playing a more sneaky game instead of just slicing his throat, which is what he probably would do. Now, Tobirama's sensory is nothing to really scoff at, as when reanimated in a weaker body at that, Tobirama was in Konoha, yet could sense both Madara and the Ninetales from countries away, whilst alive and possibly for Fatigued, he was able to just touch the ground and sense the entire Kinkaku unit, so maybe if Minato scattered the marked kunai across the battlefield, Tobirama could potentially sense which one you know, Minato was actually going to, uh, to emerge at, and then just kind of help aid in his own reaction speed, but that's assuming it's even going to be good enough, and more than likely it's not going to be, as this is just a presupposing that Minato doesn't, uh, you know, he does this weird strategy of being, um, you know, uh, I guess sneaky instead of just slicing Tobirama's head off. Which means that Tobirama's most viable win cons won't work, such as tandem paper bombs, which are certainly his best bet. These paper bombs were more than capable of bombing a full-sized deity gate, something that not even a point-blank concentrated Jubi Blast could do. So, obviously, Minato is not, you know, tanking this or anything like that, but, uh, you know, Tobirama won't even be able to pull this off, as Minato is just far too fast and would blitz him before this ever happens, whilst he attempts to get the revived Edo Tensei and then put the bombs in them and then explode them. And if we're being generous and say he can, Minato, like, also just has a kunai on top of the hokage statue that he could just teleport to at any time so you know uh it's not happening it's not happening in conclusion to the whole video i was originally going to go with like a kcm versus edo and then an alive versus alive but this video is already an hour long and base me until wins against prime toby ramos stronger than edo toby ramos so I mean, let's be honest, and Minato has more of an advantage in Edo as well, since he's more of a ceiling type of character. So, I think it's pretty clear that Minato, the fourth Hokage, is the rightful winner in this bout. So yes, I'm admitting I was wrong, and I will still keep my old Tobirama vs. Minato video up, just to show you my old thoughts and whatnot. As for this video, I would still ask you guys to leave a like and subscribe, as that would help me out greatly. Or, if you would like, I also have solo videos out on each of these characters. So yeah, if you uh, want to understand more their high level end stuff maybe check those out but as always love you guys